Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, in another session of Implant Diary. I uh, hope you are doing well. You are starting your work these days, and uh, I know so much stress you have. And uh, I hope everything going well for you and for your practice, for your loved ones. Uh, we have very special guest today, Dr. Garcia Luis Fonseca from Portugal. And uh, uh, I wanted to say hello to my friend. Hello, Darcio. How are you? Hello, Maziar. I'm fine, thank you. And you? Thank you. Fine. <laughs> I'm uh, from Portugal. From the people that, are the, that don't know, I'm from Lisbon, Portugal. Oh, yes. Exactly. Uh, there's no need to introduce you, but as a routine, at uh, this time, let me ask you to introduce you uh, when you started dentistry, your university, and we will talk about so many things uh, about the life, the work-life balance, this uh, pandemic, and maybe about this uh, uh, this uh, riot and protest about uh, the situation in the U.S. Uh, yes. So mad the situation these times. Mad, mad uh, situations and so much emotions. I yeah. will talk about it. And also, um, doctor will uh, do a little presentation about uh, partial extraction therapy that uh, he's very good at it. So please, uh, welcome, doctor. And thank you. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation. Please, please go. go. Well, I'm 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 Darcio Fonseca from Portugal. I I graduated in 1997 in the in a university in the other side of the river. We have Lisbon, and the other side of the river we have uh, uh, Almada. And very near Almada, we have the place where I, I it's it was my, it's my university. And um, my, 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 my daughter, my old daughter, is, studi is studying in the same university now. <laughs> she is right. in the same university. Uh, I, 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 do, I, have, uh, I, I only work in uh, private clinic, clinics. I have my, my private uh, practice. And um, what I do, it's only... Uh, surgery, implant dentistry, and uh, rehabilitation, oral rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. um, I do all the stuff about uh, prosthesis, and all the cases I, I do, it, it's uh, the surgery and the prosthetic part, it's done by me. And uh, it's done by uh, our own lab, because we have a lab in our clinics. So all the work is done in my, in my own uh, dental lab mm -hmm. great great so your daughter your other uh, daughter uh get your own empire yes after years yes but she now she's in nutrition uh -huh. she, in the first year so i maybe she she going to move to dentistry in uh in the, in the next year uh -huh. but uh this is my hope she moved <laughs> because everybody tells that uh, here in Portugal it's very complicated the uh -huh. situation about the, the the dental business. Yes, and we have uh, lots of dental doctors. Most more doctors that we really need for the size of our country and the mm -hmm. size of uh, and and for the amount of people that are available to treat. But I, I only want, I only want that for one of my four children, at least go to dentistry. Uh -huh. okay. I don't care if it's too much or not too much. I want that my one of my children go to dentistry. Great. <laughs> yeah, but my children uh, don't like uh, dentistry. I'm not. I don't know why. Uh, my daughter likes art. She's studying. Uh, one, 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 two. Yeah. One and of mine, two. Exactly. Maybe because I have a, another um, uh, in my, uh, in my, I have another career in theater, in art. You know, I'm a theater director. I'm ah, a okay. White, so he, he, she liked it very much. She likes it very oh. much. And 
uh, now she's studying uh, interior design. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Darcy, you have started your practice, yes? Sorry? You I restart. Yes, practice? yes. We start. Yes. We restart um, for May. Fourth May. Uh huh. For May. Yes. We restart our practice. And now it's. Uh, it's a it's a slow restart mm -hmm. with lots of um, it's not good I don't like to work like this we are working like we go to this making a, 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 like an astronaut you know you understand yes. it's, so, much, I, so much protocols yeah and I think it's not it's not it's not comfortable it's too too hot and um, I really, I really don't like the experience. I, I'm not liking the experience at all. I, uh, yeah, I, I hope this, I hope this uh, um, pandemic, they, 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 they know, they, they discover the the vaccine to to help everybody mm -hmm. all all over the, all, all around the world, but. Uh, um, in a selfish way, I want to be back. <laughs> I want to be back, yes, but I know I, I know that it's not going to be easy to be back again. Yes, it's a new life. It's new life as new normal, yes. and um, uh, maybe it's very hard for the team to adapt to cope with this situation. Yeah, I understand it exactly. But uh, from another point of view. You have more time with the patients. You you see less patients uh, in yeah. a day. You have time yeah. for them. Maybe not bad from this point of view. You have no, I, no. It's no. I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh -huh. uh, in the in in this point of my life, I think it was good, and I'm going to explain why. Mm -hmm. Before the pandemic, yeah. I was completely stuck with courses, lectures, uh, work, clinics. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm the, um, I'm the owner of the clinics, but I, I help a little bit about the, the, the management of the clinic too. And I have uh, two training centers that are working very well here in Portugal. So in this year, 2020, we, we are completely full at, before the pandemic. Yeah. So for example, uh, for you have an, uh, an, an idea, I, be, be, between uh, January and July, I had, if, I, if it wasn't happened this, mm -hmm. I had only two weekends, okay? In six months, yeah. seven months, yes, two weekends for me, mm -hmm. because all the weekends are with the courses, with the lectures, with going to universities, lecturing. Because I, I do, I do, I, 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 I collaborate with several universities in Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I go a lot, uh, several several uh, several weekends in, in the in the year i go to spain to collaborate with these universities mm -hmm. so what happened everything it was stopped everything yes. it was postponed so and i i realized that for two things important first i need to i need to 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 have more time to do what i like to do for example, spear fishing. I like to spear fishing, and I, I don't remember before this when I. It was the last time I go to spear fishing. So this is uh, for me. It was give me the time that I need now to do other things that I like to do. Yeah, I like play tennis. For example, I, I play tennis since my I was uh, little young, with six years old. I I start with six seven years old. So I, I play tennis for forty years. 40 years so right. it was but with the with the 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 the, the life I, I i had before i didn't have time for me 
only for work, only for uh, these kind of uh, compromises. And um, and now, now, now I have more time, yes. and this is good for me too. Exactly. I think we need we need time for us. Yes, and a good time for thinking about ourselves, about what we are so much passionate about. For example, you like fishing and tennis. Yeah. I yeah. saw a very nice picture of you fishing, yeah? Today or yesterday? Yeah, today and yesterday. Yes. I, I, it was the, what I did, for example, in the last 15 days, 15 uh -huh. days, I, I, I went to spear fishing five days. This is completely impossible in other, in other if you ask me uh, before this pandemic, where is the last time you go spear fishing? I don't remember. <laughs> you know, this is right. this is the the thing. You have more time to be at home. You have more time for the family. We have more time for yeah. you. You have more time to, and this is I think it's very important because um, life is very short. Mm -hmm. And if right. you don't uh, if you don't do the right things, you 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 are going to death with. Uh, and your life, it was stupid. Exactly. And spending time with the family and the children is very important for the children, especially. Yeah. yeah yes, I have a little little boy with two years, so mm -hmm. it was very good for him. I, I, I stay at home these three months, so almost three months. Um, and we, we did different things uh, together that it wasn't possible if I was working normally. So what I, I decided after this restart, it was I'm going to be more uh, slow. I don't want to do the things uh, that I did before. Yes. I, I want to slow down a little bit. Exactly. And uh, give me, give, give me, give to me more time. More time. Yes, we have more time for that. Yeah, exactly. And... Uh, uh, it's uh, very good uh, that I heard uh, Portugal affected less than other uh, countries around you. Yes? Yes, it's but true. Because it's of true. the people or because of the government? Well, I'm going to be very honest. I, I think they don't... I think they, 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 they did a good job. They could did an extraordinary job if they if they decide to make uh, uh, some decisions early, for example. The use of the mask is something that we decide that it was an obligation, I think very, uh, could be more early, you understand? Mm -hmm. But Despite this, we have. Uh, I think we 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 have a very good result uh, yes. in the end. Yes. We have some. Uh, we have some uh, some deaths, of course, and um, but I I think it wasn't. Uh, don't have the proportion of other countries. Yes. And um, the people, I think, in the in the beginning was very very conscious. All the people, generally. Now, I think the people are a little... Um, yeah, I know. Like, the yeah. same as every other places. Uh, maybe... The people now, I think they are not so focused in, yeah. the, in, the, in the coronavirus. Yes. The people go, maybe but... We had another, another peak, maybe another peak. But uh, people uh, like to social and to be socialized uh, and start working they have to start their work yeah i understand but uh, i think for example if you go to a coffee or if you go to a restaurant everybody's an obligation to use uh, a mask mm -hmm. and um and the people don't you don't the people don't be close yes uh, we have uh, social dist distance uh, social dis distance and I think the, the things are going to be to be well yes if we don't have another peak 
yeah, maybe we have because some in some countries I I see people going to the beach and uh, confronting each other, confronting each other. They go to the, the everywhere. It's uh, it's like there is nothing and uh, not nothing happened before. It yeah. depends. I think depends their character and the culture. Yeah. Yeah. But we know, for example, in Iran, it was very bad yes. in the beginning. And yes. how is the things now there? Uh, it's not good. It's not good now. I'm saying that uh, the people, some of the people uh, don't uh, follow the regulation. Uh, they, maybe they, they uh, become exhausted from the yeah. quarantine. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. But uh, governments and also the, some people uh, don't follow the regulations. I don't know why. But because of that, maybe we see another peak. Yeah. But, but yeah. because of the economic situation, many people have to start their work. They have to. They cannot stay at home anymore. Uh, they, it's a uh, multifactorial uh, yes, but choice. the same year, the same year in Portugal, we, we, I think the government decide to decide early to put the people in at home uh, with no work, uh, with no. Uh, yeah. uh, it's like a emergency state exactly. of the country, but um, but we cannot. Our economy is not able to 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 keep uh, to keep us all the country at home yeah. waiting for a new better days. You understand? Yes. And we, the government we, cannot support this situation. Yes, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. Here it's impossible too. So uh, the the people that have a business like me and uh, um, the support was very low, very low, and. Uh, it's it was low and slow the the two <laughs> things and so we need to to restart we need to restart and and start working and we we need to keep our life uh, going it's yes, not exactly not stop also we can it's not going to be coronavirus that's going to stop the world they yeah they stop for a while but yeah we need to go <laughs> yeah exactly uh, especially in the U.S., we see a uh, very bad situation. Uh, maybe this inequalities, inequalities among people, maybe pandemic amplified it. Of course, I think and, so. Yeah. You see what's happened now with the death of the, this, uh, exactly. this man. It yeah. was, they, it's, they are going, they, they are destroying the, the country and, and stealing and and, yeah. and and destroying everything and I, I think it's I think we we all know and see what happened and and exactly. of course it's not uh, it's something that we yeah. we we are sad to to see what happened exactly. and, the, was, and the situation but I think it's much more sad in the in the in the end these these uh, this situation that the people are doing now, I think it's uh, very sad, very sad. Yes, yes, so, so much emotions. And uh, this inequality, uh, I think, uh, was deep in the culture of US, but this pandemic amplified it and make it worse. No, no, this is true because people are not uh, used to be at home for yeah. one month, two months, um, without uh, stuck so the people want to be free to go wherever they want and with this pandemic the people go to home and stay at home for 30 days 40 days 50 days so i think all the the temperament and the emotions are very yeah. the people are stressed yes and the threshold is stressed. decreasing their threshold yeah. is okay yeah Yes, we are fa facing with uh, several different changes and uh, the lifestyle will be changed, I think. We cannot go to normal, to the 
previous normal, maybe a new normal are uh, in front of us. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your hobby, your fishing. Yeah. What technique you use? What, what kind of fishing? Well, I, I'm here in Portugal, we have Atlantic fish. So it's, um, I don't know if you know the name of the fishes because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Atlantic fish. We have here sea bass, mm -hmm. we have uh, sargus, we have uh, orata. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a fish with a yellow, with a yellow mm -hmm. mark. In the in the front, and we have octopus. Octopus, everybody knows. <laughs> yes. And uh, and 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 that's it. And this is the the most uh, common. Okay. What kind of what kind of fishing technique you use? That I do spear fishing. Spear fishing. Yes. I have a gun. Uh huh. And uh, I I I take my breath. <gasps> And I go to fish. <laughs> okay, you do it from your boat or inside the sea. You aim and uh, yes, I have one boat, and I, I I go to my boat and I go to the places. I have several. I know marks. you you aim the fish from the boat or inside the sea. You jump inside the sea and then fishing. Yeah, no, I I jump inside the sea. Oh, well, nice. Yes. But without uh, without uh, uh -huh. air. Okay, without the it's it's uh, the the challenge is your you need to to hold your breath and dive. Oh, it's a and big between, and between this time, you need to catch a fish and come. Right. <laughs> no, and you only you you every dive, it, the most of the dives you you can catch one fish or or none. Mm. Sometimes you can, if you go to a hole with a, with uh -huh. a, you can, you can catch two fishes, but oh. it's very, very difficult. It's not easy. Oh, so it's an adventure. Nice. In your uh, uh, small presentation, if you have any uh, picture of that, please show us. Oh, I need to put, I need to put the, okay. yes, what I can put. Okay. Uh, so let's back to implant dentistry. Uh, you you are in implant dentistry from uh, what do you call it nineteen ninety seven? Yes, I, no, I, I, I finished my graduation in uh -huh. nineteen ninety seven, and I start placing implants in two thousand. Two thousand. So twenty years in implant dentistry. Yeah. Okay. So you and problems uh, mm -hmm. and, and problems too. Not. <laughs> so you have your own signature you have your own uh, uh way of style you have your uh your own style for placing implants for uh doing implant dentistry in your patient what uh maybe you want to uh, share something special about this signature about this feeling about of uh, 20 years of implant dentistry to share as a story as a I uh, quote something special for you to want yes. to share it. I'm going to be very, very honest with you. I, I, I start, I'm going to, to, to tell you the story. Uh, I, I graduated in 1997 and I start to do prosthesis. And uh, the surgery that I do, it was uh, third molars and extractions. And in that time I didn't play simpans, so I start uh, solves many problems with uh, with fixed prosthesis before I place implants, and uh, I, I I understand in a very few years that uh, I need to improve in the, in, in the implant dentistry because I cannot solve the problems of my patients only with fixed prosthesis. So I go to Cuba. And I make a, a course uh, in uh, with implants, uh, an implants course. And in that time, I had my own clinic. So I remember that I go to Cuba mm -hmm. and I place nine implants, nine implants in, in some patients. 
And when I returned to Portugal in, the, the, in that month, I put 40 implants in the clinic. What is the problem? Is that I understand how to do a hole to put a screw. But in that time, I didn't know nothing about, I didn't know nothing about um, dentistry and implant dentistry. So I decided to learn a little more about it. And I had the opportunity to go to several, to several uh, people uh, and learn with several people very, very well known and very good. And uh, I, 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 I decide to go uh, uh, make lots of conferences and congresses uh, uh, out of my country. I, I go several times to United States. I, I went in German. I went in uh, uh, United Kingdom. And I, I, I was I, I decide to make a, a great investment in my career mm -hmm. to be able to do it in the proper way. So, what I what I learned with these twenty years, um, twenty years mm -hmm. uh, experience is that we we are not we, we we are always learning. Yes, we cannot we cannot stop learning. We cannot uh, we cannot uh, uh, say to ourselves that uh, we are good enough. So it's not necessary. You learn more. You need to learn. You are. You, you. I think it's. This is one of the things that I learned with the, the experience, is that uh, I need to know how to solve the problems that that I provoke. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, you are not so able to do the things in the proper way, and in that time, you don't have the education that you have now. Now it's very easy. You have uh, you have everything in YouTube. You have everything in uh, webinars. You have uh, Facebook. You have Instagram. But twenty years ago, you don't have nothing. You the universities don't don't teach implants. Yes. Uh, here in Portugal, you don't have in that time too much uh, offered. Yes. Uh, for you have an uh, for you have an idea. I think I I did the first course i was one of the first guys in portugal that make courses with patients to other to other dentists in 2006 mm -hmm. so before 2006 you you go to a course you learn something in a weekend or uh, in uh, in hands on but you you never see a patient yeah yes you understand exactly yes so I think that the education changed a lot in the past 20 years. And uh, I think today uh, the people, um, it's an obligation to treat the patients well. Because you have all the, all the knowledge is in front of you. And you need to, only you need to catch the knowledge because it's everything it's open exactly <laughs> you you they have the same idea yeah they can choose they can choose whatever they want yeah and i i, I have the i have uh, the the chance to learn with the one of the my mentors one of the guy that i i like more and and it was very important in my development in my implant dentistry, it was Mario Steigman. Mm -hmm. uh, I I was his student for uh, since two thousand eight, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's a great friend, and I I learn a lot with him. Right, but I learn a lot with other people too, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah, we always learn. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, uh, what technique you? What technique you like most for implant placement? You will stick with, uh, for example, immediate placement, delay placement. What do you prefer? Most of my implants are immediate placement. Mm -hmm. I, I, 90% of my implants are implant placement. 
and um, and I did a lot. I I do a lot in plant placement and loading. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I I'm quitting a little bit about loading at the same day. At, at the same day. Why? Uh, because the problem is it's give me the stress after the surgery, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult. You 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 talk to your patient and he understand that this implant it's only for a, a smile and not for a, not for be useful um, for for a few months so i i decide in some kind of patients i don't like to make loading at the same time mm -hmm. so uh I'm going to be very honest, even in the, in the partial extraction therapies that it's an obligation to make, to make uh, immediate implant placement and loading at the same time. In some patients, I decide to not do it. Yes. I decide to do a Maryland bridge, for example, and, and, and make uh, after the, yes. uh, the final crown or a provisional and after the final crown. Because some patients don't deserve immediate loading yeah what uh yeah what what about uh customized abutment customized I, use, abutment. I use i use i use i use a lot i use the i use the cervical vpi system yeah i like it um i have i have this system and i use a lot um but uh, it's it's very good system. I I I I I believe in the system, but sometimes even the the, the VPI system, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Depends of the placement. Depends of the kind of patient. Depends of the the bite of the patient. Sometimes even if it's not in occlusion. Mm -hmm. It's not high. So it's, uh, I think it's sometime uh, I need, I decide to do, uh, if I have a patient that I, I don't am, I'm sure that is going to be able to, to have a loading, I decide to, 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 to close. And when I make the, the, before I make the final impression, I make the healing abutment, uh, customized healing abutment. Exactly. Because I'm going to be very honest. And if you read the article from uh, um, from uh, Tarno in 2040, he, he showed that no matter what you do, it's uh, the static result could be fantastic, even if you don't make immediate uh, loading at the same time, if you don't use a, a provisional at the same time. And for example, my experience is a, a little by, like this. If you manage well your soft tissue, even if you make uh, the final crown in more than one or two steps, you are going to achieve a nice, a nice result. So the stress of the immediate loading for me, mm -hmm. I, I don't yes. want. Yes, I understand. The, the features, the systems, the kits, all of them give us uh, opportunity and options. We have to decide, for example, for this patient, is it's working or not working? Yeah, we, we have to decide. Yeah. This is on the clinician's experience and knowledge. It's more important than patient factors or systemic fact, system factors, implant I'm factors. I'm going to be very honest. In the beginning of my career, I, I I start to make immediate implant placement and loading at the same time. So and after I had the opportunity, I was invited by Miguel Stanley to go and make a TV show with him. So I I, I participate in several programs in that in this uh, TV show. Mm -hmm. And in the TV show, everybody wants immediate implant placement and loading. Yes. So I I start to do it very early. But it was something about the pressure, the pressure of the patient, uh, that 
now I don't have pressure. Nobody press. You don't, 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 nobody give me pressure anymore. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not pressionable now. Yes. You know what are you doing now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't discuss with the patients. Oh, I want because I seen the television. I don't care. You see the television, you see, okay, go to the other dentist. I going, I'm going to do like this and finish. Mm -hmm. I don't like to discuss uh, the others and why one do and the other don't do. I don't care. I do what I believe that it's the best yeah. for my patient. Okay, great. Uh, okay, there's you. Uh, may you show uh, some of your cases about this? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to do a, a small lecture about yes, the partial extraction therapies. Great. And um, okay, if okay. I. Uh, let I me think. let me make you host to uh, okay. to be able to share your uh, screen. Now you can share your screen. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me let me. Okay. It's here. Fantastic. Okay. Sorry. Oh, so cute. <laughs> yeah. That's me. And put one of those fishing uh, pictures in it. Okay, okay. Give me one minute. One okay. minute. Okay? Yes, yes. We have a friendly talk, so you have to, you have uh, enough time to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that. Great. Okay. And I'm also, going to show. Yeah, and meantime. Sorry? Uh, Please, please uh, uh, tell us, there are uh, different names for this technique, for example, root membrane techniques, partial extraction techniques, and uh, so, uh, another socket shield techniques. These are different names or different techniques. What do you think? Well, I'm going to, I think we have some differences between the techniques but uh, in the, in the in the end they are very they are very similar okay uh, they are very very similar in, in my opinion okay uh, but but yes we 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 have the socket shield in the in the in the beginning of the socket shield we let me okay take this one take minute your time. take your time no worries uh huh. Okay. And this is from today and from yesterday. Oh my God! Fantastic. This is only for this. Okay. I'm going to. Uh -huh. Okay. It's okay. This is your boat? Yeah, it's a small boat. Great. It's a small boat, but oh, it's well. enough. It's enough. How I'm can you start to... your practice <laughs> with this adventure? Yeah, you see? This yes. is my, my fishing from yesterday uh -huh. and from today. Great. Let me, let me do this because if I don't do this, I cannot. Uh huh. Okay, right. but you are you are you are ask me the difference between the um, the socket shield and the um, and the and the root uh, membrane. Okay, the, I, I think. But now let me, uh, Darcy, let me ask one question. Tell you br br you bring all of these uh, fishes to the to home for cooking or what? No, yeah, no. This is. Uh, Yes, uh, the most of the fishes I, I, I bring to my home. Mm -hmm. Some fishes I, I give to my to some friends and okay. my, my people that work with me, and the others I, I fish and I and I and I eat in the okay. end. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, let's back to it. Okay, him. let's let's. Uh, I'm going to start with the partial extraction therapies from a failure to everyday practice. Uh -huh, uh, because my my beginning with uh, with this uh, technique it was very bad, and uh, I think it was with uh, some persistence that I 
that uh, that uh, give me the the chance to 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 use this technique for almost not not every day but but every week for sure uh -huh. we all know that for example from the formation and maturation of a, a clot to to the mineralization and bone formation we have a time between six to eight weeks weeks when we remove a tooth so what happens with that uh, bone that it's uh, around our tooth it's we know that even uh, if we make some bone graft we are going to have always a resorption and why because the pdl was lost so the bundle bone was lost and we are going to have um, uh, in, in some cases we have total loss of the alveolar complex so we know from the 90s and 20 and the beginnings of uh, the, the the century in the 2000 that the immediate implants we 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 thought in that time that if we extract the tooth and put an immediate implant this is going to prevent some and we have some uh, some articles that show that uh, that 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 talk about it that uh, maybe if you make immediate implants in the 20 years ago 25 years ago it's going to be good because give you the enough uh, uh, enough uh, soft tissue uh, that you need to 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 have uh, an aesthetic outcome uh, like you like you want yes but with the time we know from the articles from fecal from araujo from cardaropoli from lind that we need to do something more because we have always resorption of the buccal plate and the resorption of the buccal plate it's it's more it's more dangerous from from the resorption of the palatal plate and we need to add something and they start to use some bone grafts in the ga in the in the gap we need to to do some soft tissue grafts to 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 give us the the volume that we need for a static outcome and um, and in 2010 Ersler showed us for the first time this new technique and the technique it was the socket shield technique i i had the opportunity to be in the quincent's uh, symposium and that he showed the show this uh, in 2010 in boston he show about this uh, article and he show about this technique for the first time and uh, in that time i i had the opportunity to work, to to talk with him and uh, I, I i i i asked him uh, if he, he had experience in that time with this uh, technique and the experience it was uh, he starts five years uh, before in 2005 five, five making the first uh, the first cases and i never forget that he tell me that you need to be careful because this is a very tricky uh, this is a very tricky uh, technique and you need to be careful because we have lots of details in this technique and without these details um, the the failures are very high and this is, was in 2010. Yeah. But in 2010, I had to the I had to the experience to placing implants for 10 years. So uh, in 2010, I this is not my case, but but we all have cases uh, that have uh, we have uh, failures. And the failures are uh, the most of the failures are about the peripantitis, uh, are about the bone loss and the soft tissue loss. So we we know that we we have uh, we need to avoid this kind of procedures and we need to avoid this kind of complications. And for avoid this, you need to plan well, and we need to do uh, some. Um, some additional procedures to give you uh, the result you are expecting even 
you know that in the in the in the in the future you are going to have some buckle uh, collapse and you are going to have some uh, uh, bone loss or uh, soft tissue loss with the with the time so if you go to background and if you are going to see what happened in the literature or you are going to see what happened in the old cases um, and this is for example a case that uh, one one dentist don't uh, remove the some roots of this patient mm -hmm. and if you see in this uh, picture you see that the the place that you, you don't remove the the roots we are going to have the soft tissue in the same position we have the same volume and if you are comparing with the places that you remove the the roots mm -hmm. it's completely different scenario here it's a it's one thing and here it's another thing and in the in for example in the in the buckle in the posterior area here you don't have uh, nothing it's completely lost yeah it's so, very nice a picture no comments yeah it, yes it's i think it's very it's very easy to understand uh, the difference between you remaining a root or you extract a root you don't i think this picture you don't need to 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 read uh 100 articles because everything it's here it's yes. uh everything it's maintained if you have the root and everything it's lost if you remove the root it's easy it's very easy to understand and if you go to the to the literature before before the socket shield you know that for example from the articles from salama from the salama brothers yeah. in 90s about the root submerged technique they 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 say in that article that the root submerged technique preserved the natural periodontic thereby completely preventing the bone resorption mm -hmm. and we know that from uh, articles from the varpana and smuggler and monkler in 2009 that even if you place an implant and accidentally you you touch a root you don't have um, you don't have uh, any specific pathological sign after the healing period and after loading. So I think it was the the combination of these two uh, scenarios and these two uh, uh, these two scientific uh, uh, papers that maybe make some light in Ursler brain. And he say, okay, if we touch uh, accidentally a root when we place an implant, we are not going to have, in all the cases, we are not going to have uh, a failure. And if we preserve the roots, we are not going to have the uh, bone resorption and soft tissue and soft tissue loss. So maybe it was the beginning of the socket shield technique i don't know I, this is something that i i i think a little uh, a little bit why why he, he had this idea but i think the idea it was because in the literature before we know that some articles um, talk about these two techniques the root submerge and the um, and the accidentally uh, um, uh, touch of the implant in a root. Yes. So he decided to use to 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 make a proof of principle in 2010, and in this proof of principle, it was very interesting because he 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 he, he make the implant uh, touching the shield. So he it's the 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 implant. It's completely uh, touching the the. The socket shield, and uh, between the the implant and the socket shield, he, he, he put endogame. And after, when he make a histological study, he see uh, that uh, new new uh, cementum was formed, or uh, he had formation of the new cementum between the the implant and the shield. And the shield was, uh, and, and the implant was completely, uh, um, it seems it was completely osteointegrated. 
But in that time, he didn't make, he, he isn't sure about this because only five years later, he, he showed that we have newborn formation between the infant and the socket shield because in that time, he didn't use the endogame. It was a, a article that he makes with the uh, Bomer uh, uh, in 2015. But uh, what he what he sees in the in this article, it was in this proof of principle. It was you don't have uh, modification, alteration, resorption of the buccal plate or uh, the soft tissue uh, when you use this uh, soft uh, socket shield technique. So in 2010, that was the time I make my first socket shield. It was maybe some months after. I, I, I make in November my first socket shield and I, I see his lecture in July mm -hmm. in uh, Boston. So when I make my, my first socket shield, I think very few people in the world uh, had that, that experience. And in my country, Nobody. So I was the first guy that made this technique in, in Portugal. And when I start showing some cases about this, uh, this is what, how I felt in 2010, completely isolated, because the periodontists don't believe uh, in, the, in the technique in that time, and the, surgical, uh, the surgeons uh, don't understand why I, I, I left a, a piece of the root uh, and why I didn't extract the, the whole root to place an input. So it was uh, difficult times at time to, to show to the people that this technique works. Yeah, I think I, 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 I waste lots of time in the, in the last 10 years to trying to prove that this technique works. Yeah. But now it's very it's interesting because now I see everybody talking about the socket shield. Everybody knows, everybody have experience, everybody uh, knows the technique, but uh, 10 years ago, nobody. Yes, maybe, maybe a few, few people in the world. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very few people in the world. So Another thing that it's important to understand is that the socket shield is not he is not this. So it's not you are you are not able to remove a tooth and you put an implant implant in the in the middle of the tooth like a drilling through the roots or or uh, or making a a three hundred sixty socket shield. This is nothing. This is not going to to be a, a good option. And this is very important that people understand that the, the socket shield, it's very, very, it's a very sensitive technique, but it's only, only to, to keep the partial of the, 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 the portion of the, of the root in the, in the, in the buccal part, in not in, in 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. And this is a picture that I, I, I take from the Facebook. I don't know. Uh, from uh, from from where is the the author of this picture? But this is not a soccer shield. And I'm going to show you my first case and my first failure. So it's it was um, this is, it was a nice case to understand when you don't know how to do something in the proper way. The you don't fail if you don't fail it it's by luck. So you, you need to understand how to, how to perform all the techniques. But in 2010, uh, I think only Ursler and maybe a few people more had the experience to do this. And the, the truth is that Ursler never show how we perform the socket shield. So I had, a, I have, I had here uh, this premolar to remove. Mm -hmm. I had a problem because I fractured the, the premolar. So I decided to make my socket shield. And I placed my implant and my crown. In 2011, the patient came and I see, well, something is not going well. And in 2012, the patient comes again with the, the, with the crown moving. So uh, I make this, uh, this x-ray and I decide to remove 
the the implant the crown and uh, when i decide to do it i remove the remaining part of the root and i have this um this this thing that i do in in all the cases that i take pictures this is a problem that i have since 2005 i i take pic pictures of all the cases and all the steps of the cases mm -hmm. and uh, i'm from a, a small village here near lisbon so when i have this failure i say to myself well i'm not going to try this an, anymore because this is not for me this is not predictable but after I see uh, some uh, very important people in, in the infant dentistry making the soccer shield in 2003, uh, 2013, uh, Maurice Salama, Howie Gluckman, and uh, some other people that's trying to do the, 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 the soccer shield again. So I decide to learn and understand what I did wrong in this, in this case. If you see here, it's very easy now to understand what I did wrong. The implant is completely engaged to my to my uh, root. Yeah. Uh, the root it's not in the in the in the right position in according to the implant. So um, lots of mistakes that give me the the opportunity to learn about it and to understand how to perform the technique in the right way. So what is PET? What is partial extraction therapy as well? The partial extraction therapy is it's, uh, an umbrella. Uh, um, it's a, a number of, uh, of uh, techniques that are in the same umbrella. And the techniques uh, are the techniques that uh, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can leave a, a, a part of your, your, your root to maintain the soft tissue and the, the buckle plate. And we have uh, several, um, several uh, techniques, different techniques. We have the root submerge described by by Salama brothers, we have the Pontic shield, it, and and that it was um, described by uh, Glackman et al. in 2060. You have the socket shield described by Ersler. You have the the socket shield, the root membrane technique. Uh, uh, it was described by Mitsias Mitsiadis, and you have a, an ear. I want to add the proximal socket shield that was described by Joseph Kahn in 2013. But it's not, proximal socket shield is not one of the partial extraction therapies. I, but I had because it's, the, it's like the socket shield, but only in the, in the proximal part between two implants. For example, it's important to keep the, the, the papilla between the two implants. And um, it's very important when you prepare the, the socket shield, you, you need to know where is the, where is the, where is the uh, where, what, where is the bone that is available, and what where is the position of your root to decide where is the the, the best place to place your implant and to prepare the socket shield, and um, I advise to see this article from Dutois and Gluckman uh, in Jota PD. It's a very nice uh, article that give you the uh, classification of the of the position of the root remaining to the to the bone available uh, available and it's uh, very nice to to read this article before uh, you start making the socket shield for example for making the this technique mm -hmm. where is the what are the indications of this technique well uh, the indication, the primary indication is a socket type one. If you have less than one millimeter of buckle plate, so I think it's very risky. You remove the, the, the root because you are going to have a resorption very early. So the socket type one, I think is the, the, the main indication. The teeth without mobility, the, with LTPDL, uh, teeth with caries, but with uh, with uh, the remaining part of the root uh, in a good shape. 
and if you want to do immediate implant. Mm -hmm. And where you need to be careful with this technique? Well, if you have active periodontal disease, it's not an indication. If yeah. you have a tooth mobility, it's not an indication too. If you have the a root caries very big, you need to evaluate if the root it's uh, it's um, it's available to to do this technique or not. Because if it's very uh, with caries and very soft, it's not a good a good root to make the socket shield. Because sometimes you need to remove the caries under. Uh, the the level of the bone and if you do it you are going to to lose the the um, the indication to make the socket shield and um, if you don't have buckle plate for example if you have a socket type two or three it's not indicated to make uh, the socket shield technique if you have external root resorption two if you have root fracture uh, principle, if it's a, a, a vertical fracture, you need to be careful uh, to evaluate if you can do it or not, because some root fractures, uh, obliquous or, uh, or, or verticals, are very, very, very... Um, sometimes if you don't raise a flap, you don't have sure that you have a fenestration or if you have... A, um, uh, any problem with the with the buckle plate? So I think if you have a horizontal root fracture, it's more it's more uh, indicated to make the socket shield than if you have a, a, a vertical fracture. Mm -hmm. And if you have a periapical lesion, um, you need to evaluate if you can do a apicotomy um, in the proper in the in the in the in the proper way and remove uh, remove all the lesion uh, or uh, to make the socket shield or you need to to remove the root remove the lesion and and and, and give you another option in that uh, in that uh, in that scenario uh, it's uh, not uh, it's not uh, impossible to do it you can do it but uh, you need to be in more experience with the technique to make uh, the apicotomy and the socket shield in the same procedure so how to prep the how to prep the socket shield? I think it's uh, it's very important to understand how to prep the socket shield in the proper way. We have this uh, we have this uh, article that was described uh, for from Glukman and Dutois in two thousand eighteen, uh, how to perform the socket shield. And uh, you need to remove the, the coronal parts after you need to make the, the preparation of the, of, the, of the root inside the canal and make the separation between the palatal part and the buccal part. After we need to trim the, the socket shield, the, the socket, the shield to the bone level. And on you need to make level. a bed yeah. to the bone level, to the bone level. We, we need, we, we used to do it at the bone level. I, we don't use any more than one millimeter above the bone level. Everybody, it's not, it's not a mistake, mm -hmm. but you have more chance to have uh, external uh, exposures. Yes. And, and I think if you have a, a very thin biotype, you need to be careful yeah. because one millimeter, it's not a big problem. But sometimes we don't have um, we are we are, we don't have sure that it's one millimeter or it's a little more. So if you put in the bone level, uh, it's more easy to prevent this kind of complication. Yes. And these complications are are very easy to solve, but they are a complication, and you 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 need to avoid complications. Okay. After you need to make a bevel in the inside part of the shield or a, a chamfer to give you space for the buttons or the prosthetic part. And between the, part, the, the, the shield and the, the implant, you need to graft with something because if you don't graft with nothing, and I know that, for example, uh, the root membrane technique, they don't graft with nothing. The problem is that you are going to have soft tissue invagination between the, in the, in the, 
in the in the first uh, millimeters of the of your implant and if you graft with something uh, it's like a barrier to the soft tissue invagination so it's very important to make the the the, the graft between the shield and implant and make something like a, a provisional crown or a, a customized healing abutment to um, to to seal the, this graft. Do you understand? Yes. So you mean no touching the uh, root part with implant? No touching the root part. This is very very important. If you if you ask me if we we have. Uh, we have cases that we touch the implant in some part of the of the the root i think so i think in some in some cases it's uh, almost impossible you don't you don't yeah. have any part of the implant that don't touch in the shield but but if you can avoid it's better you know why because like a jumping distance sorry like a jumping distance in immediate yes time. yes yeah and and you know why it's important you give a jumping a jumping dis distance because sometimes when you are drilling and placing your implant if you are touching the shield you can you can move the shield you understand mm -hmm. and in that time you don't see you don't uh, you don't have uh, you don't see this uh, happening and more later, you can have a passive ero eruption or resorption of the shield or, or um, a eruption of the shield, or you can lose your shield after. So I, I think it's more easy if you prepare your implants and the implants are always with a distance yeah. to your shield. So it's very important to evaluate what kind of... of uh, implant you are going to use and sometimes it's better you use a narrow implant and you have the distance between the implant and the shield this is my opinion okay exactly thank you okay. so in this in this um this month uh gluckman and dutwash and salama show this uh, article very nice article a decade of socket shield technique a step-by-step -step partial extraction therapy protocol that they show all the steps of the the socket shield and uh, some things are very very important the this technique it's not to raise flap you need to avoid to raise a flap to put the uh, your implant so if you need to make some um, uh, you need to use some uh, gingival retractor to to avoid to damage your your gum but you need to be sure that for example you are leaving the shield in the in the in the bone level or one millimeter above the bone level so it's important you see and you need to use some tools to 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 help you to make this in the in the proper way so this is a kind of a technique that if you don't have the right tools you are you are going to have a failure for sure so i decide to make my own kit so i have my own kit this is a very cheap kit it's nothing it's nothing too fancy or uh, too complicated it's some burrs that i use to make all my my socket shields uh -huh. And I need to do, and I have, we need to have a gingival retractor like this, mm -hmm. some elevators, very thin elevators and, and uh, sharp elevators. Yeah. And we need to have some uh, forceps, very sharp too, to, to remove roots. Uh, because you cannot, uh, you, when you make the separation between the two parts, you cannot touch the buccal part yes. uh, of the shield. So you cannot make any type of uh, uh, force uh, in, the, in the buccal part of the shield. So you need to have the, the right instruments to remove the palatal part without damaging the buccal part. Mm -hmm. And if you do it in the proper way, you you are very predictable in different cases you are going to have always the same result for me something that it's important it's to use for example the shield must be two-thirds of the the length of the root uh -huh. 
1.5 millimeters of uh, width, um, not more than 1.52 millimeters of width. If it's uh, too, if, if it's less, you can have resorption of the shield. If it's too much, you are going to have problems with the space for your put your implant and give the space the jam jumping gap to to the to your implant. Um, another thing, it's important. It's depending of the of the connection that you have. Um, you need to decide where you are going to put your implant. For example, if you if you have a conical connection, you can put your implant a little more deep. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have an uh, internal connection, you, you, you cannot put your implant too deep. So you, yes. you, you only can put one, two millimeters uh, above the, um, the shield and not more. Uh, because of the and and it's very important to you even if you use external x or internal x you need to use always platform swift uh, switch because uh, you need to have a, a, a change of platform to give you the space for the shield exactly this problem you don't have with a conical connection for example if you use a conical connection of uh, implant you, your abutments have the uh, a color a uh, color more more uh, more narrow than the the than the, the than the, the input so yeah, it's more easy to put it uh, deep yes it's more easy to do, to put it deep yes so i'm going to show you only one case this is a very this this case was very nice because i learned a lot with this case Mm -hmm. I have a fracture of a crown, a old crown. This is very. This is the 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 best, the best uh, um, cases for soccer shield. It's old crowns that broke. Mm -hmm. So you, I have a, a broken crown here in the in the twelve. I decide to put my implant. Um, I I put my implant. In that time, I, I graphed the, the gap that I had between the, the socket shield and the, and the input with xenograft. Mm -hmm. And I make a soft tissue graft uh, with a punch, a palatal punch. And I make a, here a soft tissue graft to, to protect my graft because I didn't want to do immediate loading in this case. So uh, I suture. I I use a Maryland bridge mm -hmm. to to make the provisional crown. And look, I have here a minor complication. And why? Because my shield was very high. Mm -hmm. I didn't put the shield at the bone level, so I had this complication. This is a minor complication. It's easy to solve, but it happens. Yes. So what I did, I trimmed this, and few uh, weeks later, uh -huh. I have this result. So this is very easy to solve, but it's something that we, if you can avoid, it's better if you avoid. Exactly. This is the soft tissue after the after the the socket shield, the final crown, mm -hmm. and look. That Very we nice don't, room. Yeah. Yes, we have. We don't. This is an internal X implant, and we don't have any collapse of the buckle plate. So I think this is. I didn't did here any any kind of soft tissue graft in the buckle part to to give me the the volume that I know zero. I I, I only make the so, the socket shield and that's it. Finish. Mm -hmm. I like the things very easy. I don't want to have waste time with the procedures and, yes. and surgeries. You understand? I, I like uh, simple uh, procedures. Uh, I, I don't like headache. And uh, with, some, uh, with some other techniques, it's uh, too much effort. Like, to, and uh, better for patients, more comfortable. Yes, yes. And the patients don't, don't have the, the palatal part destroyed or the tuberosity and, and the necrosis of the soft tissue graft and problems. And I don't care. I don't like problems. I, 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 want, I, I like simple things. Uh, my life, it's simple things. I don't like uh, difficult things. So I think this technique is very good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I learn a lot uh, a lot about this technique and in this technique it's very nice for me for my 
for my uh, for my way of living. Mm -hmm. right. So this is the this is the final crown. Mm -hmm. No collapse of the buckle plates, and I and the patient comes some some uh, years after with the same with other pro problem mm -hmm. fracture of the eleven. Uh -huh. So in this time, I decide to make uh, the socket shield in a different way. So I make here the C-shaped so socket shield. Mm -hmm. So I extend the shield a little more for mesial and for distal uh -huh. because I had an implant in the, in, the, in the lateral and I have a crown in the, in the central okay. and I have uh, the idea that if the patient uh, lose this central, if I extend this shield to the to the mesial part, I'm going to preserve the papilla. You understand? Yes, exactly. So good idea. I I make the the preparation different from the other preparation. I put my implant. You see here. Mm -hmm. This is very thin, but only in the in the zone of the bevel. I make a bevel to put this very thin, but to give me the room for I place my implant and I graft the the gap. Yes. I put the implant. This is an, a, con a conical connection implant, and I graft the 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 gap. In right. this case. In this case, I decide to make immediate loading because I know this patient and uh, I, 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 I was more confident, confident with the techniques uh, too. So I make immediate loading. And this is, was the immediate provisional of the, of the patient. It was in the surgery day. And look, the difference between the conical connection and the external internal ex connection yeah. the the deep of my implant is different here i need i i i have the chance to put a little more deep than the other mm -hmm. it's very easy to see and those uh, wedge wedge type is the root yes in mesial and distal yeah yeah mm -hmm. nice so this is was four months later this is the healing four months later uh -huh. And it's very important to understand when you make the the, the final crown, you need and, and even in the in the provisional, but in the final crown, it's you need to make the S shaped prosthetic emergence profile to support the maximal uh, soft tissue infill, mm -hmm. uh, and it's important to put your shield in the bone level. It was described by Gluckman in two thousand eighteen and Dutois. And uh, I have here a very nice picture from my friend Richard Martin mm -hmm. that show the space that you need to have between the abutment and the crown and the socket shield. You see uh -huh. here? Yes. He raised the flap and it was very nice he raised the flap to show that we need to have this uh, gap between one thing and the other. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, Sometimes we, 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 we receive from our labs uh, some, uh, some crowns and after we know this, we need to do some reshape of the crowns before we deliver. You see here that we have the S shape, yes. the perfect S shape for the, the socket shield, but uh, the first crown don't come like this. Yeah, nice. So we need to make some adjustments and we need to know a little bit about the the um, the, the transition zone and the the, the subcritical area yes. to understand how the how this uh, this area must be uh, must be reshaped and must be uh, looked with careful at this time we have more pressure on soft tissue Yes, yes, you have more room for the soft tissue if you have this type of subcritical area. You have a very nice article from, from Gonzalez. He had two articles about subcritical area with a distance between 10 years, I think, and it's uh, very good articles to, 
to, to read. Oscar Gonzalez from Spain. And this is my final crown with the S shape. Mm -hmm. Right. You see, I put the final crown. Yes. You see the difference here of the dip of my infant in the conical connection and the internal connection? Mm -hmm. Yes, very nice. And four years follow-up, we make the, these me measurements to see uh, to see if you have uh, papilla, if you have loss of papilla, and if you make the comparison between the two implants and the two crowns, it's the same. You don't have any difference. So you have the same result with two crowns in original teeth and two implants with the socket shield. Great job. So this is a very short video about this, this uh, procedure. It's very, very short. I'm going to show you. Great. Look, I'm, I'm putting the, my finger in the buckle part to, to, to avoid give too much pressure. What is the implant type? Sorry? What is the implant brand? Oh, this is Neo Biotech. No, Neo Biotech. Uh -huh. Neo Biotech. Here I'm, I, I make the provisional with the old crown. And this is the, the provisional. Great. Sorry. Before I go, I want to introduce my group. Okay, this is the pet research group. We are uh, 90 people for 12 countries that, uh, that uh, study and, uh, and, and, and discuss about these, uh, these uh, techniques. Uh -huh. I'm very, very glad and very honored to be part of this amazing group of persons and uh, amazing group of clinicians. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very, very nice to see that since 2016 until now, the most of the literature about the partial extraction therapies and socket shield was done by, by people from this group. And um, it's a great honor to be part of it. Great. Great, great honor to be part of it. So, what is the take home message? before I leave, you need to remove the fragment of the palatal portion of the root before the root extraction. The shield should stay at bone level if you have uh, thin gingival biotypes. The implant must be one, two millimeters apical in relation to the shield. If you have a conical connection, you can put a little more. The implant must be done, must be placed in the 3D position uh, correctly, like, you, like if you are going to do immediate implant. So you have to do a palatal approach. Mm -hmm. you, give to, you need to give space to prosthetic components to avoid these uh, prosthetic components uh, touch the shield. You need to avoid the flap because every time you, have, you, you raise a flap, you, can, you, you are going to have bone resorption. Mm -hmm. And you need to use the correct instruments, the right instruments. It's key in the shield preparation section. So it's very, very important you have the right tools to, to make the, this. Uh, you know, they, I know that Megagen have the, yeah. the, the, the root membrane uh, kit and now they have the pet kit from Maui Glutman. They, 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 I think it's in the market already. Yes. So if you want to, to know a little more about us uh, visiting, uh, I, I, I would like to, to invite you to visit Be Learning and Be Clinic. It's the, our training center and our clinic. And you have here my Facebook, 
uh, account, my uh, Instagram account and my mail if you have any doubt or any question. Um, uh, I invite you to come to Portugal too. It's, it's a big pleasure if, if you come to Portugal. I, 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 really, I really like to be your host. Absolutely. I love to. After this uh, pandemic, <laughs> I will do that. So I'm, I'm finishing saying that there are no secrets to success. It's the result of preparation, mm -hmm. hard work, and learning, learning from failure. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much for, for your time and time of all the, our uh, attendees for this uh, web talk. Thank you so much, Darcio, for such a nice presentation. Uh, thank you so much. It was amazing and inspiring. Uh, presentation and talk, you know, in Implant Diary, the philosophy is uh, uh, that uh, methods and techniques are secondary. The mindset and concepts are primary and paramount. Thank you for yeah. doing that with us. And, thank uh, you very much. Uh, let me reclaim hosts. Host and uh, okay, perfect. Thank you again. I have here. We have here. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, thank you. It was a very nice talk. With thank you. you very much. Thank and you. Thank you so for the, the kind invitation. It was a pleasure to be thank with you. you. So I put it thank in uh, Google Classroom and uh, Implant Diary channel. And uh, yeah, the participant can uh, watch it later. Okay. And, uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Peace thank you. Through. Bye. Stay safe and say hi. And uh, yeah, follow your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.